Good morning and welcome to Hope Community Church Online. Thank you for joining us this morning in worship. My name is Amanda Ballmer. I'm the youth pastor here, and it's great to be with you guys this morning. If you're here with us, I want you to go ahead and text the word CHECK to 567-202-2111 or follow the link on here. We want to make sure that we know that you're here, that we can support you. You can submit prayer requests. Um, we want to make sure that we're connected during this season. So let us also know you're here by just commenting, letting us know how your weekend was, um, maybe a favorite meal or fun activity you did. Um, let's go ahead and take a moment and greet one another. Another. We're also going to spend some time this morning um, reading some scripture, um, and we're going to start this morning by looking at Proverbs chapter 8, verses 30 through 35 to get us started. We're starting a new series called Foolproof. We started it last week with myself, and I don't know about you, but I'm ready to hear from the Lord and, and hear His instruction and His correction. And so let's start by reading scripture this morning. It says, now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me, find life and receive favor from the Lord. Let's pray this morning as we begin to worship. God, we seek you and we seek your instruction and correction. And although sometimes that can be um, challenging to hear and accept, if you're, if you're trying to teach us something, it's not always easy, but we know that it leads to wisdom and we know that it leads to furthering your kingdom. So let's humble ourselves, Lord, today. Um, may you speak to us boldly, correct us where we need correction, encourage us, encourage us where we need encouragement, and grow us, Lord, where we need some growth in our lives. We love you, Lord. We seek you in your wisdom. Amen. Good morning, Hope Community Church. My name is Jeremy, and with Bethany and with Taylor, we'll be leading the singing portion of the service. So wherever you find yourself at, uh, join us in song. And the first song we're going to sing is called Open the Eyes of My Heart. It's the same one we ended service with last week. Uh, and I chose it again because this whole series is about gaining wisdom. And um, we can read the Bible, and we can try to understand it in human terms, but if we just ask the Lord to reveal himself to us while we read, it's a much richer experience. Open the Eyes of My Heart. Holy, holy, holy 
holy, 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 I want to see you, holy, 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 I want to see you. stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop
his keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are As we continue to worship this morning, we're going to go ahead and pray and pray through the Lord's Prayer. Let's focus specifically today on the part of the Lord's Prayer that talks about guidance. So the lead us not into temptation. Lead us, Lord. Guide us, Lord. Be our guide and our compass when we're lost or scared or confused. We talked about it last week, guys, when we, when we try to do wisdom in this life on our own strength and our own guidance or on Google's guidance, we come up short. And so as we pray this morning, I just invite you um, to open your hearts up to the Lord and say, God, I need guidance in my marriage. God, I need guidance in my job. God, I need guidance when it comes to raising my kids or making decisions for my aging parents or, or in a relationship with you. I just need guidance. We could all use it. No matter what stage of faith journey that we're on, we could all use guidance. So let's pray. And when we're finished praying, we'll recite the Lord's Prayer together. God, we love you and you love us. So much so that you have chosen to be our guide, our protector, our provider, all of these things, God. And we just thank you. We do not want to do this life alone, nor can we, God. So we just surrender everything to you. And we ask, Lord, uh, would you be our guide? Would you deliver us from the temptations of this world? Would you um, be our guide through the ups and the downs? We seek you and your instruction and your wisdom. You are our way maker. And you make a way and you are our guide when it feels like there is no way. We invite you into this space, into our hearts, into Hope Community Church, and into our community and our state and beyond. God, we just ask for your guidance in this world. We love you. Amen. Let's go through the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we're going to continue to worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. At Hope Community Church, you can give in one of three ways. You can do it online, hopecommunity.tv forward slash give. You can mail it into our church office, or you can give by phone, texting the word give to 567-202-2111. Before we give, we give you a couple announcements of things coming up in the life of our church. Uh, as we move into this month of July a little deeper, our kids and our teens have started to develop a new rhythm. And so starting this morning, uh, our teens met live for their Sunday school class. If you were not a part of that or couldn't be a part of that, uh, don't worry. There is a video that you can watch. So go to the, the teens Facebook page and there's a link to that video. For the rest of this month of July, starting today, our kids' ministry, uh, for the ministry, will have also a video on their Facebook page that is already live, and you can go there now, and you can watch it anytime throughout this week. And so that'll, end, that'll extend throughout the rest of this month, and then different plans for when we get to August. If you have any questions or anything, and you're not confused with what's going on, why don't you write your question in the comment bar here, and we'll make sure that we can help you out with anything you need to know. This time we're going to give. I'm going to give by my phone. We're going to pray over our giving. Let's pray. Kind Father, we thank you for the chance to give, to be generous like you are generous. We thank you for your provision for us. We thank you that you are a giving God. We ask that as we give right now, you'd bless it, you'd multiply it, and that you'd use it to reach and bring hope to people around us and around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Of you, yeah. 
I got something for you right now. Are you ready? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spell out a word, very simple, and then I'm going to ask you to say that word six times super fast, as fast as you possibly can. All right, ready? So you're going to say this word. You're going to say it, not spell it. I'm going to spell it. You say it six times as fast as you possibly can. All right, ready? The word is S-I-L-K. So S-I-L-K. Say that word six times really fast. Go. Silk, 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 silk. All right, quick. What does a cow drink? Milk. Milk. Oh. <laughs> Did you fall in line with those who were here and say that a cow drinks milk? Because in actuality, a cow drinks water. My goal was to fool you. Why? Because we're in this series we're calling Foolproof. And the truth is, every one of us can be a fool or foolish at some times. It's a complex world we live in. And so sometimes we get confused by the complexity of it all. And then also there's some things that are going on around us that have deceptive practices and we can get tricked or fooled into some of the wrong directions at times. And so in this series, we're looking at the scriptures, the book of Proverbs that talks about how to have and hold on to and gain and live in the wisdom that comes directly from God. We need God's wisdom now. We've always need God's wisdom now. But you, me, we need God's wisdom right now. Pastor Amanda started this series off last week, giving us the introduction of what the book of Proverbs is about. It's about how to gain wisdom to live right in this world. And so we're going to continue to work through chapter 1. We're going to look at the next section, which is verses 8 through 19. And so in Proverbs chapter 1, Verse 8, we'll read the first two verses of this section. It says this, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. And so in this passage, in this kickoff of this section, uh, the author we believe is Solomon is talking to a son uh, so someone who is either his biological son or someone younger who he's trying to mentor and train up. But he's saying, listen to your father's instructions. Don't forsake your mother's teachings because they're a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. As we look into what he's trying to say in that whole garland for your head, chain for your neck, what we get the image of is this idea of an heirloom. Now, I have three tools that I don't use. I have a lot of tools I don't use regularly, but there are three tools that I just won't use on a project. They sit on my shelf next to my workbench. And the reason that they're there is they are my heirlooms. My dad used that hammer when he was a kid. My grandfather used that wrench. And so for me, those are heirlooms that I want to be able to pass down to my kids as this has been in our family, and it's a part of who we are as handy people and people who have skills in this direction. Heirloom. Do you have an heirloom? Put it in, in the comment bar right now. What's an heirloom that you have that you cherish that's about the lineage or where you come from? What this is being told right here in this passage is that wisdom from generation to generation is an heirloom that's passed down that we should cherish. So how does that wisdom come? 
It's by listening to father's instructions or listening to a mentor's instructions. It's not forsaking our mother's teachings or someone who cares for us and puts into our life to care for their teaching or listen to their teaching. When it says instruction, one of the words that also comes along with that in that instruction is the idea of correction. Don't forsake those who care about you, who have invested and poured their life into you. Don't blow off their instructions or their correction. Later on in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 18, it's a very common passage, one of the most popular passages of all of Proverbs, but we usually misquote it. You may have heard it say, pride goes before the fall. But if you go to Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18, it actually says, pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before the fall. And so in that idea, in that mindset, what the author of that proverb is trying to push at us is this mindset that we can get into that says, I know better, is actually one that is built on pride and will lead us towards destruction in the fall. We know ourselves. And sometimes in our own little world, we can convince ourselves that we know better than we actually do. And that pride sets us up for making mistakes and living foolishly. And if we fall into this category that our, even our culture kind of pushes where we isolate ourselves, we don't listen, we don't want to listen to other people, especially people who have a different perspective or a different experience than we are. We convince ourselves that wrong is right in that situation. And so we need to listen to the instruction and to the correction of those who care about us and those who've invested in our lives. Now, what that means is that sometimes we have to admit that we might be wrong or we might be ignorant. Now, I know there might be a knee-jerk reaction already when I said the word ignorant. Don't call me stupid or whatever. Let's look at what the word ignorant actually means. It means lack of acknowledge, lack of training. And so with that definition, we are all ignorant about some things of this world. For me, uh, foreign languages, automotive repair, brain surgery, cancer, space travel, uh, the challenges of being a minority, the challenges of being female, all things that I'm ignorant of. Now, in some of those areas, I want to learn. In some of those areas, I'll never be able to learn and understand it at a, at a competent level. And so we admit in these situations that either we've been wrong or that we're ignorant. We don't have the information. We don't have the knowledge. We don't have the training. Why is it important? for me to take on this posture of humility to say, I might be wrong in this situation or I might not have all the information or experience that I need. The rest of this section, starting in verse 10 all the way down through verse 19, tells us why this is so important. My son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us, let's lie in wait for innocent blood. Let's ambush some harmless soul. Let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole like those who go down to the pit. We will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder, cast lots with us, and we will share the loot. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths, for their feet rush into evil. They are swift and shed blood. How useless to spread a net where every bird can see it. These men lie in wait on their own, for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. Such are the paths of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. Why is this important for you? Why is this important for me? This idea of having humility to understand I may not have be right in everything. I may be wrong or I may just be ignorant. I may not know what I don't know. The reason is temptation is all around us. Temptation is all around us. Now, the example of here of like, come and hide and let's kill somebody and plunder and take this stuff, that, that may not entice you. But other things may entice you or other things may entice me. Like, hey, come, let's be selfish and only think about ourselves. 
Hey, come, let's talk badly about others. Or, hey, come, let's get on Facebook and let's bash people. Or, come, let's put that person down. Come, let's be dishonest about this. Hey, let's post this article that we know is not true, but it says a point that we really like or think it'd be funny. Come, let's give up on this relationship. Come on, let's give up on this marriage and find somebody new. You see, wisdom helps us choose the right pathway, even when we don't want to choose the right pathway or we don't know what the right pathway is. Instruction and correction are essential for continuing to gain wisdom. I want you to say with this, this is our, per- our perspective of humility for right now. I'm not perfect, and I don't know everything. Say with me, ready? One, two, three, go. I'm not perfect, and I don't know everything. I'm not perfect, and I don't know everything. Believe it or not, I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. I've not done everything right, and I don't know everything that's supposed to happen or what we're supposed to do. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do tomorrow. And so when we take that approach of humility, we put ourselves in the place of learning and continuing to walk towards greater wisdom. As we start to kind of lean into this, as we start to, to dig into this, what this means. And so we're putting ourselves in a position to receive correction, receive instruction from others. I, I want to put some warnings up front, okay? There is a difference between correction and condemnation. And so some people will, because of their love for you and their desire to help you out, will want to correct you. And there's other people that won't have the same intentions or goodwill, and they will say things that are condemning to you. How do we know the difference? Correction gives us a place to improve. Condemnation attacks us as a person and as an identity. Correction helps us grow, helps us move forward, helps us grow. Condemnation attempts to get us to shrink back or push us back. And so if someone that you care about or you love or you respect is bringing about something, you have to understand, is this correction or is this condemnation? If it's allowing you to see a blind spot and move forward, it's correction. If it's trying to hammer you, push you down, hurt you with no attention for healing, then it's probably condemnation and should be ignored. Some of you already have experienced condemnation. As I'm speaking about it, it's starting to stir up some memories of some pain and some hurt that you've experienced. Can I, can I talk to you for a second? I want you to know this. Hear this. If you miss everything else, if this is you, I want you to hear this right here. This is not God, and that's not God's plan. This is not what God wanted for you. These are not the words of God. Okay, Condemnation, things that push you down, hold you down, shrink, make you feel less than, those are not God. Okay, I'm sorry you experienced that. It was wrong. Some of us leaders and some of us parents, we have good intentions and we have a bad execution. And even in our desire to help you, we've said things that have been hurtful and demeaning to you. I'm sorry. And then some of us as leaders and parents, we just simply have bad intentions. And if you've faced that, I'm sorry. That's not what God wants for you. So if I would ever think about opening myself up to this idea of being instructed or corrected by others, how do I do that? And so here's the thing. The biggest overarching word is this word humility. Humble. It's the recognition I don't know at all, and sometimes I'm not in the right place. I'm, sometimes I'm wrong. When we start with there, and we allow people to speak into us, um, we still have to do some things with it. And so here's the things. Breathe, listen, chew. Say that with me. Breathe, listen, chew. Breathe, listen, chew. The reason I use those things is first, breathe through the knee-jerk reaction. You know how it is. Someone brings something to you, instruction or correction, and sometimes there's that knee-jerk reaction to like, ah, push it away, disregard, dismiss. Ah, I don't want to hear it. Breathe through that. Okay? Just <gasps> breathe through it. After we breathe through it, then we listen. Listen to what is actually being said. It may come in a tone or a format that's not the best. 
listen, what's being said? Is there validity in what's being said? Don't be planning your excuse or your response or your counterattack during that time. Just listen. Breathe, listen, and then chew. Chew on it for application. What do I need to do based on this information or based on this correction? Remember, if it was, it was correction, it's a place to improve. It's about improving by gaining more of the wisdom that God has for us. And so we would need to know what is it that I need to move into, live into, to grow into as a part of this new information or this correction. And so chew on the application, chew on it to figure out what it is that's being asked of me or called out for me. Now, that, that's from that side of when we receive it. What about if we're in relationship with somebody and we see something going on, either they, someone else is in the wrong space or just isn't aware of what they need to know about that situation? How can we give instruction? How can we give correction? Here's a couple things. First, correction instruction should come from the strength of relationship. It comes best in that situation. I may call someone out that I don't know about something um, for their protection or something, but usually that's not the best way. Uh, those are time more extreme situations. Correction, instruction, best comes from a strength of relationship. Because in that, you need to be communicating this. Even in this, what I'm doing, I want you to know, you are valued and stable in this relationship. I value you and it's stable. This doesn't change the way I feel about you. I just want best for you. Second thing, correct and instruct the behavior, the attitude, the actions. Give clarity to what improvement you think needs to be seen. Vague ideas don't help us get to where the needed growth is at. And so the more clarity that you can give, the better off it's going to be. This past week, I've been digging into a book. It's been sitting on my pile next to my bed. We were going on a little trip, and so I took a book with me. And it's a book about Steve Jobs. If you're not familiar with Steve, Steve is no longer on this earth, but Steve was the uh, creator, one of the developers of the company Apple and many of the products that we have with Apple products. And so as I've been reading his book, there's so much of his life that I really don't want to emulate. Uh, there are some bad habits that he had that I, I don't want to follow along. But there's one thing about Steve that I, I want and I'm learning in front of, from him uh, in this book after he's already gone is he had such an inquisitive nature. He always wanted to learn. He always wanted to explore deeper things and try to figure out things and learn how things work and all that kind of stuff. I want that in my life. Uh, I'm not perfect, and I don't know it all. I, I'm not perfect, I don't know it all. It doesn't mean that I just like stop and sit right here and say, okay, well, even though I don't know it all, I'm not perfect, I'm just, I'm here, I'm stuck. No, I, I want that inquisitive nature that says, okay, I, I don't understand what's going on in our world right now, but I want to inquire more knowledge about it. I don't understand how COVID is impacting all of our world right now, but I can do some research from broad different sources to understand it. I don't understand all the racial tensions and issues that we're facing right now, but I want to hear and listen to people and discover greater understanding of what different people have grown up with and are feeling and are hurting because I want to be wise. Wisdom that comes from God and wisdom that understands God's world. And so we can explore all sorts of places to, to learn more, but I think there's some places that we need to start with. When we say, I'm not perfect and I don't know it all, and I'm ready to receive correction and instruction well, where do I go? I believe the first place is the scriptures. We've been reading the book of Proverbs, and so whatever day of the month it is, that's the day we read. So today's Proverbs 12, read, or today's the 12th of July, read Proverbs chapter 12 today. And tomorrow, read the 13th chapter and keep on going. You do that as you go through the series, you read the book of Proverbs a couple times. And so the Bible is a place that we hear instruction and correction from the Lord. Prayer. Holy Spirit is with us and we pray. God and communicates and connects with us. And sometimes through pressions and through different things that go on in our life, we understand, we get instruction or correction from God. And the third one is others. 
others. When we choose not to isolate ourselves, we choose instead to dig into a community of people and we allow ourselves to be known by them. God will use them at times to bring instruction and correction to us. And so as we start to live into this idea of on this journey of gaining more wisdom from God, those are the places that we should be living in. I hope you, church, we ask three questions we teach. What did you hear? How can you respond? Who can you share this with? And so as we guide this, I want to guide this a little bit. Um, The thing I think the Lord is speaking to us about is this. Receive correction and instruction well. Receive correction and instruction well. Receive it from the Lord and receive it from people who we trust and who can speak into our lives. The reason we do that is because we know the truth. None of us are perfect and we don't know it all. So as we continue to move forward, as long as we are alive, continue to move forward to greater understanding of God and the wisdom that God gives us, we'll continually need more instruction, more correction. Can I pray for you? God, we believe that all wisdom comes directly from you. And so right now we just rest, we breathe, and we ask, would you continually help us to root out the foolish tendencies in our lives and to live wise? We don't know it all. And we're not always right. We live in a complex world, and so we need your wisdom. Holy Spirit, as you walk through this week with us, would you give us insight? As we read things, as we hear things, just this discerning heart that says, eh, I need to research that more, it doesn't feel right. Or I need to question that. Or I need to dig in a little more, because I need to learn what the instruction or the correction is here, Lord. Lord, as we open our scriptures, would you teach us? Would you challenge us? Would you correct us so that we can be more like you? And Lord, would you bring people around us? They might be there already in relationship with us. And maybe for us, some of us, we don't have those relationships. We need to develop those. Would you help bring people around us that we can connect with, that we can trust, and that we can help each other by instruction and correction? Would you use them for me? Would you use them for my friends? We thank you that you care enough about us that you don't let us stay where we're at. We ask this all in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
Thanks for joining us today in this online service. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you singing with us. We appreciate you hearing the message and praying and giving your tithes and offerings. And really, we just appreciate you joining us and worshiping during this hour. Uh, just remember, we are in a series about Proverbs, a series about wisdom. And the challenge presented even last week was to read a chapter of Proverbs every day. And we need to do that because we need wisdom. We need to recognize and acknowledge that we don't know everything. Uh, we need to be taught and we need to be taught well. And the best place to do that is from the Bible. So keep reading Proverbs and come back and join us again next week. Have a great day. Enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm.